Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about the recently created 3D map of the entire universe. The collaboration between hundreds of scientists across the planet was able to create the most accurate and also the most, I guess, mind-blowing map of the universe we've ever been able to make. So let's talk a little bit more about this, and welcome to What The Math. So hypothetically, to create a map, we obviously have to look around the planet into every single direction and try to identify as many objects far, far away as possible. To do this, scientists have been working for several decades now, trying to collect the light from very distant galaxies, from very distant early light, and obviously try to also calculate the distances to those objects. But every single step in this process had a lot of different challenges, including certain uncertainties and certain uh, new studies that seem to contradict previous assumptions. And in some of the previous videos, we've already discussed some of these challenges. The biggest challenge, of course, being that it seems like the universe is actually expanding at different rates in different directions. There also seem to be different uh, other challenges as well, including the constants potentially not being constants. But for now, what the scientists wanted to focus on is in collecting and combining all of the data we've collected over the past few decades and turning it into a single encompassing map of everything we know about the universe. And this is obviously not a very easy thing to achieve. First of all, there are different methods and different telescopes looking at the actual night skies. There are also different discoveries, some which are somewhat contradictory. And most importantly, there are also regions of the universe that are completely invisible to us, mostly because our own galaxy, the Milky Way, is hiding quite a lot of views from us. Which becomes quite apparent if you were to look at this top perspective of the 3D map, with really large chunks of the map completely missing. This is actually because of the Milky Way hiding it from us. Nevertheless, using all of the data available to us, the scientists were able to combine it into this beautiful sphere that you see right here, and this is essentially the most accurate map we have today. However, I also have to add that this only represents an extremely tiny fraction of everything there is in the universe. On this map here, there are only approximately 4 million different galaxies out of trillions and trillions of galaxies that should be visible to us in the visible part of the universe. Which means that what you're looking at here is not even a single percent of the entire universe. This is more like 0.0002% of everything there is in the universe. So in that sense, this map is actually extremely incomplete. But nevertheless, this is the most detailed one we have to date and is a great achievement for humanity as well. But the question is, how do you even create something like this? Well, to make this, you have to look at various directions around the planet for several decades and try to discover as many of different galaxies as possible and also combine it with the so-called earliest light in the universe, also known as the uh, cosmic microwave background that you see here as a kind of a sphere around the visible universe. So this map contains several different really, really large investigations that took years and years with the most recent one being the so-called EBOS, which stands for the Extended Baryon Oscillation Spectroscopic Survey, quite a mouthful, and essentially represents this middle part here that we've never been able to observe very accurately before, but allowed us to now collect enough galaxies to kind of map that part as well. And this illustration here shows you kind of in a nutshell what we're looking at here. So as you might know already, when you're looking away from Earth, you're technically looking back in time. So, in essence, this is not just a map of space, this is literally the map of space-time. It's a map of history of the universe, and it shows us what the universe was like billions of years ago after its creation. The farthest light here, the first light, is the so-called cosmic microwave background. That's the sphere encompassing everything else in the middle. But in between that light and some of the earliest galaxies that we're able to find, there's actually a huge gap known as the Dark Ages. And I think this right here should kind of give you an idea of how big this gap is. So essentially this huge gap you see between some of the most distant galaxies we've discovered and the so-called CMB, that's the Dark Ages. That's the stuff we don't really know much about. And the universe was not transparent and was difficult to see through back then. It's kind of impossible for us to really see anything that early on. Then these white galaxies that you see here, that's actually some of the earliest galaxies we were able to observe and they're known as Lyman Alpha Emitter Galaxies, 
because these were some of the most active early galaxies in the universe and were emitting quite a lot of hydrogen or the so-called Lyman Alpha radiation that's very very bright and quite easily visible even from really far away. And in the last decade or so we've discovered quite a lot of them, so this is a pretty large region on this 3D map, allowing us to kind of get the grasp of the total size of this visible universe. Then right here in the middle, the yellow part, these are all various types of quasars we've discovered over the past 22 or 23 years or so. And because these quasars are usually extremely bright, they're also quite visible from really far away distances. So we've collected quite a huge database of these quasars, there's millions of them we've discovered, and they allow us to see the universe for roughly around 5 billion years of its existence in this region right here. And then, as we get closer and closer to planet Earth, more and more galaxies become visible to us. First we get these blue bright galaxies known as young blue galaxies. We also get these red galaxies known as old red galaxies. And a lot of other different types of galaxies that have been discovered over the past two decades that allowed us to create a relatively accurate map of the nearby space. With some of the most well-known and some of the most easily visible galaxies being right there very close to us, the green spot in the middle represents the so-called nearby galaxies, and that's essentially all of the famous galaxies we know of. And so by creating something like this, the scientists were able to finally sort of summarize all of our understanding of the universe and get a pretty good idea of what it might have looked like for the past 12 billion years. There are obviously still a lot of gaps in our understanding, but we're definitely getting closer to knowing what's happening with the universe and most importantly trying to understand its expansion. And one of the important questions that all of this tries to tackle is in regards to the expansion of the universe and the mystery of the so-called dark energy. In other words, the scientists are really trying to understand is the universe expanding equally in every direction, has it been expanding and accelerating more or less the same, or has the expansion rate changed over time and is also different in different directions. And what this study seems to suggest is that, for the most part, the expansion rate seems to be kind of the same, but it has changed with time just a little bit. Specifically, if you look at these graphs right here, even though the expansion rate for the most part seems to be the same, the so-called Hubble constant seems to be 10% slower than the value calculated from the distances between the galaxies closest to us, which does suggest that maybe the expansion rate did change over time, and there definitely seem to be some discrepancies and some uncertainties in the measurement and also calculations related to the so-called Hubble constant. So in terms of answering the questions of dark energy, it actually created more questions than it provided answers. However, it dramatically narrowed down the possibilities for both the Hubble constant and also the curvature of space. In one of the previous videos I mentioned that there is actually a slight possibility that our universe, which is always assumed to be flat, might not be flat after all, it might be curved and it might actually create a kind of a really really large loop. In other words, if you were to go in a single direction for a very long time, you would eventually come back to exactly the same spot as you started, as you would technically on planet Earth. So this is something the scientists are speculating about, but there are still a lot of discussions and a lot of uncertainties. It's a lot more likely we're not going to know the answer to this for a very long time, but the calculations from these studies do suggest that the universe is most likely more flat than not flat. The calculations for the Hubble constant and the curvature of space have now really been narrowed down to just these values. In other words, if the universe is not flat, it probably has extremely low curvature, and the expansion rate of the universe can only be in between these two values of the Hubble constant. All of this just means that we're getting closer and closer and closer to try to understand what's happening with the universe, what's going on with the actual dark energy and the expansion rate of the universe, and most importantly, understanding all of this will also help us understand how all of this will one day end. It will help us understand how the universe began and how it's going to end as well. But it's very likely going to take us much much longer to get to these answers. As I mentioned in the beginning, we've only covered like a thousandth of a percent. This is not even remotely close to an actual map of planet Earth, for example. So getting a more accurate and more detailed map of the entire universe is definitely going to take us much, much longer because there are trillions of galaxies and we've only discovered about 4 million and analyzed them in detail. 
which of course means that we'll have a lot more things to talk about in the future, so make sure to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. You can also find all of the additional publications and the videos released by the scientists behind the study in the description below. Maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot, and maybe support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can also find it in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.